Welcome back to week 5 of uh, Advanced Native Mobile Programming class and this week we are going to discuss about Foley and JSON okay so uh, before I uh, enter the tutorial I mean I explain the tutorials I need you to I need to address some of concepts of Foley, JSON and Endpoint API okay so um, you may already know that Foley is a kind of HTTP library that makes networking for Androids easier and faster. Okay, you know how to use it in mobile application programming classes, and instead of using Foley, you may use Retrofits library, which is offer same functionality. And um, why I used Foley instead of Retrofit is because Foley is uh, supported by Google itself. Okay, so uh, uh, the one of the features of Foley is the ability to has concurrent concurrent network connections, which means you may use uh, more than one connections to the backend endpoint, and and it runs at one time. Okay. <clears throat> And the next features that we are going to use in this tutorial, this week's tutorial, is the cancellation request. Yeah, which is you may cancel an ongoing, ongoing connections, and it can clear up uh, a memory that being used. Okay, so we can use the cancellation request to cancel any request of uh, folly transmissions. Okay, that's about folly. And next. Uh, uh we use json library yeah what is json json is a kind of library java library that used to uh, decentralize or centralize json's objects into their other formats yeah which is we use we, we use this to convert our json's uh, strings into our uh, student class okay so we going to uh, uh convert those JSONs into the student class easily okay so using JSON uh, you can call the two JSONs which is converting from the the Kotlin object into the JSON strings or vice versa the the from JSONs methods that convert from JSONs of strings into the uh, Kotlin objects okay so I will show you uh, how this library can make uh, make a way more easier to read JSON and parse the JSON data okay and also in JSON we also use the serialized name annotations which is is the way to map uh, JSON field names and your class field names sometimes your class field name is mixed met, uh, unmatched yeah unmatched with uh, the json field so um, we can solve this by using serialized names to serialize uh, your student class name your student field name with the json field respectively okay and next uh, is the endpoint api it basically is just a, a address or url which is we can access and we can retrieve data from it and we use that for in up into our apps okay so we can make endpoint api by using like a php programming language and you put it on the server and then that php can uh, can um, give an output of json strings which is can be consumed by our folly okay and <clears throat> Let's go to the tutorials and um, in this week tutorial, I want I want to show you how to implement Foley library to replace hard-coded stuff. Remember, uh, in previous week, we we write hard-coded stuff, hard-coded value uh, students, and then we display it on this cycle view. Now, what I'm going to do is I really want to access the data uh, through the Foley instead of using the hard-coded stuff and we are going to see how easy to map between that 
JSON's value into a list of students easily by using the JSON library. Okay, and of course, um, finally, we're going to implement the refresh layout action, which is uh, the way we refresh the recycle view by swiping vertically from up to down and we're going to see it, how it can be done easily also okay before um we start our tutorial please reopen your last week project okay and the first thing we must do is to add users permissions of internet access it is of course uh, an obvious obvious uh, things to do because uh, fully requires internet okay to do this you open the manifest in your project see and then um, on the other uh, above applications you should type user permissions and then internet just like that okay um, this is our last week project yeah as you can see we have uh, we implement MVVM here a model of view and then of course a view model package okay so what i mean with hard-coded stuff is this one yeah this one this all of this is hard-coded stuff because we are going to replace this with a with a folly yeah with the actual uh, uh action of uh, retrieving data from external sources okay in the latter week i'm going to uh, show you how to retrieve data from internal sources okay but for now we just stick with fully okay after that um let's take a look of this um the endpoint this address i've already created one endpoint that can can, can you use to to follow along with uh, our tutorial today you can open your browser and access the website the um, adv slash student php and then as you can see we got a, a json files json strings i mean and of course you can copy those files go to those uh, strings and open the json viewer .stack who copy here and click viewer here to have a better look on your json structures as you can see here um, we got two object which is i can add add more object later and it's um it's put inside the array okay this one array so uh this objects uh has id student name birth of date phone photo url which is actually have similarity with our model class yeah we got it it has id name pod phone photo url but um, notice that some of field name may have different field name here yeah? so this one is student name again I, we got name here and b birth of date we got pod and to solve this we can use serialized name annotations okay but i will explain that later now uh, we talk about clear text traffic. clear text is any transmitted or stored information that is not encrypted or mean to be encrypted yeah um uh, the way android uh, treat uh, urls is very strictful because in oreo or above uh, if your if the endpoint url is not encrypted or not https it will consider this as an illegal not secure transmission and immediately terminate your apps okay so if you have endpoint without HTTPS and you try to access it through Foley or other way, it will terminate your apps immediately. Okay, so um, to fix this temporarily until we have HTTPS, uh, you may add following uh, activity tags in config. I mean, in your manifest, yeah, uses clear text traffic equals true. So open again your manifest inside the activity. I'm sorry, it should be application, yeah, not activity. Inside the applications and at the Android users clear traffic as true. Okay. This will fix temporarily uh, the error, yeah, the, the exceptions. Next, uh, we need the JSON and Foley library in our projects, which is you can edit 
uh, following codes yeah into the gradle files so open it build gradle model apps and then you need to copy and paste the folly and json's repository address and press the sync now button okay next um on the list view model yeah we are going to add two variables yeah the tag and the request queue folly and the tag variable is useful letter on the folly request cancellations okay i'm going to um, explain that later okay and after done building okay let's open the list view model let's add those variable private fall i mean tag equals you can write any string as you like yeah it doesn't matter just use to identify identify the request poly that we created okay and of course we also have the private for uh the queue yeah the queue which is a such a kind of re string request object and we set it as null all right we set it as null okay and then <clears throat> we delete everything inside the refresh methods okay so we delete this everything okay so we have the tag and then we have the queue and we have remember we still have three uh, live data live data um variables okay so next one we are going to set the loading error as false because no error happened yet okay so we set it as false dot value equals false remember this one is boolean and also um we start loading we start loading the data which is we we start calling the the folly and load up the data okay so we should show the loading progress bar so set it as uh true here okay and then next um, we are going to call the create folly by adding the folly new request queue here so we add queue equals folly dot new request queue as you can see here it requires context objects which is um this is our this is a new problem yeah because the live view model or, or view model doesn't have any access to context okay uh thankfully that there is a subset of view model or extension of view model which is called android view model that have access to to that context object okay so um to solve the problem yeah to solve this error first you need to replace the view model here with the android view models okay and then you type in the the app i'm sorry the applications or whatever whatever name you have you want to put in inside it and then you put the applications equals current applications okay and then we got this okay the list view model is now extension of extended from android view model and because of that now we gain access to the get applications which is uh it has the context object that we needed okay and next uh we wait a minute what is error here oh yeah for i'm sorry i forgot uh the first one is not a string request this is wrong because the actual the actual uh data type that we need is the request queue yeah the object of request queue not string request so we change this to request queue okay that will fix the error now we define the url address which is http idv solution.com slash student dot php okay so we define the address and then next uh, we're going to make the connections okay using the string request okay so for 
string request equals string request which is take three parameter uh, sorry four parameter the first is the method the method you choose the fully request request dot method dot you may use post or get okay whatever you like and then the address the destination address and then the success listener and the error listener which is in the form of lambda okay you can simply create opening and curly bracket for success uh, function and of course for the error uh, listener here so type enter tap another enter now we can define the content of this lambda which is has one response yeah that's uh, one one uh, parameter here response okay response and then you follow it you type it by the arrow here indicated that the next arrow is the content of the function body remember yeah the lambda all always consists of two parts the lambda function i mean it has parameter and it also contain the body the body of functions okay so um this is the lambda function which is called if the folly request is success okay rename to oh okay don't need okay now um in mobile application programming you you read or you parse the response which is in the form of JSONs, yeah by using the json array like this or json object yeah like that and then you go deeper in the json structure and try to retrieve any anything yeah try to retrieve any uh, value that you want to use in the applications and i'm going to show you uh, by using json or json it will uh, make your uh, your codes much much more easier yeah much more readable okay so before we, we do before we do that let's put the the loading loading ld loading progress bar set it as false remember um this one is used to uh trigger the loading progress bars and this one is to make make the progress bar disappear so uh, when as when the object of of the string request is completed and successful we we define the loading ld as false which is because this one is observed observed by by student list fragment here and yes okay as you can see here we have this program when the loading is is uh, uh is not true we um we destroy or we set visibility of loading bar as false okay as gun okay so um that's why we set it as false here because we want to this uh we want to hide the loading bar okay loading ld dot value equals false and then um if you want you can use lock to display the folly content yeah the json content okay import it and if something wrong happen in this case it may be because the internet connections is not good enough or it has problem in transmitting the data or maybe there are problem also in the server which is usually trigger 500 error message and we can uh, simply add the set the loading error ld here to true okay set it true sorry sorry it goes through which is um uh the display the error message on screens okay loading error ld value true and loading ld to dot value as is called false okay and of course you can also display the error message with it dot 
two strings okay this one also need two, two strings okay uh, I think that's it for the string request now how to read or how to parse the JSON string which is in here in the response and translate it into the students LD which is the is the list of students yeah how to translate or to convert the response JSON into the list of students yeah that's what um, we are going to do next okay so just like I said in previous course you use JSON array and object and this one requires extra precision and prone to error and I give you solution with JSON as a way to serialize between student class and JSON field okay as explained earlier that there are some mismatch field name yeah between student class and JSON for example in the JSON structure it has student name instead of name okay to solve this you need to set annotations in your model class yeah open your model class and um in the name first we you, you just need to add the serialized name yeah opening and closing here and then you put the student name why is that because in the in the json files we use student name here and it should be matched with our name in in the student class same thing also for birth of date here so you put a serialized name birth of date okay and finally we have photo underscore url at serialized name photo underscore url okay so um no need to set serialized for every field you have yeah you only serialize for those fields that unmatch or mismatch with the json files here json string here okay and and next and the next one we uh, call the from json's yeah from json's which is a function that convert from json's into the whatever you like whatever you want which is in this case we are going to convert it to list of students but um it requires two two parameter actually here the first is the json strings and we just taken from the response and the second is the type of list of students yeah to uh, solve this there are there is a quick uh, workaround here yeah which is we create an object anonymous object it doesn't matter because we going only to take the type token which is retrieve the type of the list student object the list student uh, object class and we just want to get the type yeah because the from json requires requires the type of the object yeah usually we just simply put the student dot class to retrieve a single student but in this case because the student is uh, is in the list or in the array form we need to use this workaround okay to get the type of the student list okay let's open back the list view model in the response here we have this object as type or whatever you have to name it object okay type token which is uh, okay let's import it first okay which is in the type of list of student why we use list of student because our live data here also in the form of list student okay so we got the uh, type token list of students and opening and closing constructor and then just uh, call the empty anonymous class defining here definition here and then we just need to call dot type okay so actually we create an anonymous object and define the class content but we don't care about it because what we want to do is just accessing the type okay and now 
we can um, convert those object into variable result <coughs> by calling gison okay gison dot dot um, from JSON, okay from JSON in the form of list of student and it takes two parameter which is from the response that contain the JSON string and of course the S type okay the S type and then finally we update the students LD dot value equals result that's it yeah so we update the live data therefore whatever observer observable observe this one will update that uh, data also which is uh, in this case it's launch or refreshing the adapter of recycler view which is updating the content of recycler view automatically okay by changing this value okay remember yeah the student's ld is being observed by the student list fragment so any changes here will also updating the the whatever uh, programs is under observe view model here okay <clears throat> finally yeah one of the two things that you need to do is to add the string request okay let's add g here to add the string request to the queue it's very simple just type in the queue dot add the string request okay because it's nullable you have to add to add question marks and next we are going to add the uh, tag equals tag why we need it because we want to identify the request yeah by specifying a string here a random string here why why is that because um we're going to add the clear the queue or clean up code to prevent memory leak problems especially when the request still running but the observer is no longer observe the live data which is probably you run the request you run the folly request but somehow your application is destroyed or the list fragment is no longer in the visible screens area which is it goes to all other state like on stop or destroyed also and in that case we are going to we need to clean up memory so it uh, the, me the memory can uh, can be used by other things okay so to do that we can call the queue cancel all tag yeah yes yeah, so remember we have tag here uh, to cancel everything that every request that identify by tag okay and you do it in the on clear okay the on clear of the list view remember in the life cycles yeah the uh, the view model has only two state yeah the first state is uh is being aware yeah which is we call refresh here and the second state is where the view model is no longer needed yeah and then it usually go to unclear so this is the perfect spot if we call the q dot clear uh cancel yeah sorry cancel all tag yeah cancel all tag here okay to cancel any um any ongoing folly request folly queue yeah ongoing folly request and um, free up the memory that being used okay so this is a good programming be happy yeah to always clear up uh, the string requests after it no longer needed okay right to recap what we do is call the string request we convert we convert the JSON strings into the JSON uh, I mean into the list of student by using the case on library and the result is in the form of list of student and we immediately update the students live data okay okay let's uh, hit the play button and see it the result in emulator I'm going to pause it here 
Okay, uh, it shows something like this, but I think I have um, I have uh, I think I implement wrong logic here in in the student list fragment. Okay, let's open it. Yeah. So if the loading LT is true, which is the loading progress bar still visible, so uh, I think I'm. I have wrong logic here so it should be visible here this one should be visible and the opposite should be gone okay same thing here for the the rec view should be uh, visible here okay let's try to hit the play again button okay launching activity and as you can see here we see we will see a small progress bar appear on the screens and then uh, a brief a second letter it's it finished loading and it uh, it shows the recycler view visible and of course the progress load is set to gun disappear and now our recycle view is populated with the new data from the folly here so what you see here is data taken from the JSON sorry the the JSON here let's take a look uh, we have Noni as the first can you see here the ID same the name is also same and the second e student also have the same uh, data which is um, it successfully loaded the the data from endpoint API externally in in the database externally, and then it shows on screen. And uh, all you need to do is just switch the the logic here between the boolean of loading true and false. Okay, so um, that's it, guys. Next, we are going to implement the swipe reverse swipe reverse uh, layout yeah means that you can um, swap vertically the layout to reload yeah or to refresh the data and how can we do that is and let me before we do that let me show you um, one thing that you need to do yeah you have to set ID for the swipe refresh layout because we're going to call it in our this fragment okay so open the student uh, i mean the fragment student list xml and then you will see the swipe refresh layout which is is the root of your constant layout here and rename it or set id for it to refresh layout okay enter refresh layout right and then inside your student list fragment in the auth view created you can call refresh layout dot set on refresh listener set on refresh listener in this case um, we call the view model refresh again yeah which is trigger the folly request again which is uh, download the latest data and set it into the students live data and eventually will be updated to the recycler view in here okay and we set it view model dot refresh and other things is oh, we um uh, uh, visibility of the recycle view and XOR error should be gone so we set this visibility as view dot gun and also the txt error needed to be set as disappear here it need to be gone also and the progress should be visible yeah the progress load to visibility should be visible like that and finally we um, turn off or hide the uh, progress uh, loading icon yeah by typing the refresh layout is refreshing equals false it will hide 
the loading progress yeah because um, it's already being loaded okay now uh, let's run it again and see it in action how this swap refresh works okay um, let's try the swap refresh layout uh, actions uh, how can we uh, try that is simply by swiping vertically from top to bottom if you swipe it down here you see a small progress icon shows on screen and you release and you release it the, the the thoughts here it will load the data and it, it called the refresh layer uh, refresh method of the view model and it load up the uh, data if you ask me why it's faster than uh, at the first time it loaded because fully have the kids features okay which means if the address still same it will check whether it or it already has uh, the data in the kids if so then it loaded the data from the kids and it makes the fully looks faster okay so this is how you implement the swap reverse layout i think that's enough for uh this week tutorials next next week we are going to implement the loading the image photo url and how to to call fully in the details to the fragment also okay thank you for your attention see you